Hi, my name is Pandurang Nayak. I work as a technology specialist in Microsoft, advising customers on how to move their applications to the cloud. Today, I'm going to talk to you about uh, how developers can leverage the knowledge of your existing tools and technologies and move your applications to the cloud. When you talk about the cloud, there are multiple models that you can think of. As a developer, you can look at either having your own servers and then running all of the platform, the applications, the OS and everything on your own. Or you can look at an infrastructure as a service provider where you get a lot of the layers provided to you by the service provider and then you have to still work on the OS and all the layers above. Or you could look at a platform as a service, which is what we're going to talk about in, in terms of the Windows Azure offering. Or you can also go for a bundled application, uh, which is a software as a service. Hotmail, Gmail, these are examples of a completely bundled application provided to you as a service. Windows Azure lets you have your applications put on an infrastructure that's completely managed by Microsoft for you. So you don't have to worry about the OS, you don't have to worry about the underlying network. You decide how much scale you want, you decide how much capacity you want, and then you just go and provision your application on top of that. The Windows Azure platform consists of three major components. One is Windows Azure, which gives you scalable compute and scalable storage. With scalable compute, you can take your application and then decide how many compute instances you want to run, whether it's 10 or 15 or 100. Depending on your application's requirement, you could scale your application as required. Scalable storage lets you store any kind of data, whether it's user uploaded data, whether it's your own application's data, and have as much storage as you require. Windows Azure also provides an automated service management API. This API lets developers create applications that can automatically scale the cloud environment or monitor the health of the cloud environment and ensure that everything is working. You also can program all of this with familiar tools and technologies, Visual Studio, the entire Visual Studio, and .NET platform that you're already familiar with. SQL Azure is a fully functional database for the cloud. It provides all the database functions that you're used to, tables, stored procedures, queries, all of these things available to you in the cloud environment. It's completely managed by Microsoft, so you can actually get the advantages of backup, moving to different data centers, working across multiple applications, and providing a really fast database to your Windows Azure applications. The third component is Windows Azure Platform App Fabric. App Fabric is the glue between your on-premise software and your cloud software. There are many scenarios where you have to still retain some of your application on-premise and have some of your application out in the cloud. And you'll need to interact between these two systems. App Fabric provides that glue. We'll now look at a real-world ASP.NET application that's created using Visual Studio and the same tools and technologies that you know of and how this has been moved into Windows Azure and is hosted in Windows Azure. We start by the familiar environment of Visual Studio and start by creating a new project. When we say new project, since we've installed the Windows Azure tools for Visual Studio, we get the cloud Visual Studio template. We then provide a name for our cloud application. I'm going to call it simple cloud application. And then create this particular application. The first pop-up that is shown to us asks us to select what is called a role for our cloud service project. I could either select an ASP.NET web role which actually is a web-based UI, or I could select a worker role, which is a background processing application with no UI. And I could actually select multiple different kinds of ASP.NET web roles as well, whether it's ASP.NET web role, or ASP.NET MVC web role, or even a WCF set of services provided as a web role. I could also create a CGI web role, which can be used to host PHP applications on Azure. I'll start by creating a ASP.NET MVC2 web role, change the default name to simple MVC application, and 
start it off. The MVC project asks me if I want to create a unit test project. I do not want to create a unit test project, so I'm going to say no and continue. And I then get to the solution explorer where I can view what Visual Studio created for me by default. So by default, I have the web application, which is a regular web application like you'd see in any other standard Visual Studio, new web project kind of project. And there is an additional project, which is the cloud project. The cloud project has something called a role. And that's been added as a role into the cloud project. So the web application is part of, is a role in the main project. And this makes it easier for the cloud project to know that this particular web application has to be deployed when this cloud application is deployed to Windows Azure. The cloud project also has a couple of other files, which are the CS, CFG and the CSDF files, which is the cloud service definition file and the cloud service configuration file. Let's open the configuration file and see what it contains. It contains the description of the role and it contains simple XML markup that tells us that by default, this will use one instance on Azure. We'll change that to two and save this. And now we are ready to deploy this application to the cloud with two instances. We could also run F5 and do a local run of this application. This would actually create a simulated environment of Azure on your local desktop so that you can ensure that everything is running fine. But if you want to directly publish this to the cloud, we could try and do that as well. So let's now right click and build the solution. And once the build has succeeded, we can right click and publish this to the cloud. Now, before we do that, let's take a look at the Windows Azure portal. Let's log on to our Windows Azure portal and look at the administration console on that is provided to us into which we can actually deploy this application. This is the default Windows Azure management portal where I can manage my entire Azure account. I can create a new hosted service into which I can host this particular application that I've created. I need to provide a name for the service, a URL prefix that will actually decide what the URL is, and a region where I want to host this. I can also choose the package that Visual Studio will create for me when I do the publish. So let's switch back to Visual Studio, right click and say publish. So there are two options that are provided to us. One is for Visual Studio to directly deploy this into the cloud, which we'll try later. But the first option is actually to create a service package only. And we're going to choose that because it explains what actually happens behind the scenes. So when we choose that, you can see that the publish has now started. And when the publish is completed, we get a folder with two different files. One of these, is the configuration file. And the other one is a package file of the entire cloud service. These are the two files that I need to upload into the Windows Azure management portal. So now I switch back to the Windows Azure management portal provide a name for the service. I'm going to call it simple demo application. And to provide a URL prefix, I need to provide something that is uniquely available. So I cannot provide special characters and I need to provide something that's unique. So I'm going to label this with my name so that it's unique and call it simple application. 
and then I'm going to choose to host this in Southeast Asia. I also need to say that I'm going to deploy first to the staging environment, not to the production environment. I need to check the application before I put it into production. And I'm going to call my deployment as version 1. And then go to the folder where Visual Studio put up the package files and provide that over here. So both the package file and the configuration file are provided here. And then I say OK. At this point, uh, it shows me a warning that I'm using some development settings in my project. That's because I did not change any of the default settings. I can ignore this warning and go ahead because I'm not using any Windows Azure diagnostics right now. And I can go ahead and submit this. So I need to actually click Yes to override and submit this into Windows Azure. You can now see that there's a whole bunch of steps that will start happening. Uh, the first thing is that in the staging environment, this application is being, these packages are being uploaded. Once they're uploaded, they start creating a new virtual machine and the whole process of bringing those applications up starts up. So we're going to see that uh, some of these steps will be accelerated. It takes a few minutes to create these steps. So we're not going to wait for the entire few minutes, but we're going to try and show you the entire experience. Now that all the steps of deployment are over, we can look at uh, one of the instances being ready. So even if the other instance is not yet ready, we can click on the deployment itself and look at the temporary DNS name that Azure has provided for this particular thing. Because it's in staging, we get a temporary URL with the deployment ID .cloudapp.net provided as the URL. This is only an internal URL that you test your application on. Make sure that everything is fine. And when you know that everything is fine, you can go back to your management portal and then send this application into production. You can also upgrade your application to a new version by clicking the upgrade button and actually provide a new version of your application. So we saw a simple web application being created in Visual Studio from scratch and being uploaded into the cloud. We also saw it working on the staging environment. What we're now going to see is looking at a production application, a more ready application, a much more complex application, a larger application being put into the cloud. So this is a web project that has a lot more files than we saw in the previous application. It still has the same configuration. It has some add up projects that actually work into the main web project. And the cloud project actually contains the Zoller web role, which actually tells us that this is the one web role that will be deployed into production. This time, we are going to right click and say publish and use the second option of deploying your cloud service to Windows Azure. This is a far more simpler option that Visual Studio provides you by default. You can configure Visual Studio to connect to your account by providing all your account credentials. I've done that already over here. And then you can decide to pick the service slot, the hosted service slot into which you want to do the production. So in our case, uh, the hosted service slot, a simple demo application, it would require a certificate to be added to ensure that Visual Studio is connect to, able to connect to that particular slot. And we can just select that particular slot. I'm going to choose the production slot because th there's nothing there. And also use a storage account that I've created beforehand called Visual Studio Deploy. This is a storage account into which the files first get uploaded and then get processed onto Azure. So by doing this and then providing a development label, let's say uh, Zoller V test, and then saying, okay, 
you will see that Visual Studio actually takes care of the entire set of manual steps that we did in the previous process, this time providing a completely seamless experience of taking the entire application to the cloud. It also provides you a monitoring add-on to Visual Studio which shows you what exactly is happening and which steps are being done so that you can keep track of the deployment and know that your cloud project is ready to test online. So this is uh, the simple familiar environment of Visual Studio allowing you to create cloud applications just like you would create any other web application and then deploy them to the cloud in a simple set of steps. So you saw how easy it was taking an existing ASP.NET application, creating it with Visual Studio and the same tools and technologies that you're familiar with, moving it into the cloud, having scalability as per your choice, and then deploying it into the cloud and making it available to the world. Just go on to windowsazure.com, get all the tools and technologies, they're all available there, install them, and start working on the cloud today. There's a new kind of power that can make your business capable of more than ever before with less. Cloud power. The most comprehensive solutions for the cloud on earth. From Microsoft.